In this video we learn how the reaction gives energy changes with concentration. Alright, in the prior video we have uh, examined how you can predict the spontaneity of a reaction if you're able to calculate the reaction gives energy under any concentration conditions that you wish. Right? That was a significant step forward over our calculations of the reaction gives energy at the standard state because the calculations at the standard state only predict spontaneity under the concentrations of the standard state so one bar for gases, one molar concentration for solutes but nowhere else, right? So, so having this ability to calculate the reaction gives energy under any conditions such as those maybe in the surface of Mars or inside our bodies or in the environment that seems very powerful and would like to learn how to do that. Right, so in this video I'm going to simply derive an expression that is going to allow us to run that calculation in a streamlined way. Okay, so uh, I'm going to consider here a very generic reaction which instead of being A to give B, which is what we were using in a prior video, is going to be a little bit more generic. Right, so I'm going to have now two reagents uh, capital A and capital B, and two products, capital C and capital D, and those reagents and product species are multiplied by stoichiometric coefficients, which are just the lowercase letters, A, B, C, D. Alright, so the reaction gives energy is uh, very easily defined simply as the balance of the chemical potentials of product species minus reagent species multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients. Right, so that is going to be C times the chemical potential of species C plus D times the chemical potential of species D minus the chemical potential of reagents multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients, so A and B. Alright, great. So notice that the variation that the reaction gives energy and concentration is provided uh, because these chemical potentials change with concentration. And that's something that we're, we've learned to do in prior units and we're uh, quite the experts in, on how to cast that variation of the chemical potential on concentration. So a matter of fact, what we have right here is just a summary of uh, everything that we learned about chemical potentials and how they vary with concentration, right? So we have here the case for an ideal gas, a solute in an ideal dilute solution or maybe an ideal solution and we saw that those expressions are all very similar. You simply have that the chemical potential at the concentration that you're interested in is simply the chemical potential at the reference state uh, pl uh, plus a correction uh, which could be positive or negative depending on how far away your actual concentration is from that of the reference state. As a matter of fact, we're actually going to use this universal placeholding expression, okay, to uh, yes, again, use it as a placeholder for every any one of these, right? So the the derivation that we will do right here will incorporate activities, but then later we'll actually learn how to map those activities into useful measures of concentration, like partial pressures or more concentrations and so forth. Okay, so again. The activities that we will see right here are simply placeholding expressions for concentrations, really. Okay, so uh, from now on, what we do is simply we replace the chemical potentials of all of the species by this expression, and then we'll see how we consolidate the final expression. All right, so let's go step by step. Uh, the reaction gives energy uh, is going to be equal to C times the chemical potential of C, but that is the chemical potential of C at the reference state, which is oftentimes going to be the standard state, plus a correction, which depends on the uh, concentration of C, and uh, we write that simply as the activity of C. And then you will have the same thing for D, chemical potential of D at the standard state, plus RT, natural log of the activity of D, and then we simply have to subtract here the reagents, right? So that will be uh, A multiplied by the chemical potential of A plus RT natural log of the activity of A multiplied by uh, plus uh, the component B. So the chemical potential of B at the uh, reference state, shouldn't forget that, 
reference state plus RT natural log of the activity of B. Okay, great. So uh, notice that uh, when you distribute these products, you're going to have two types of terms. Right? One of them is going to be the one that depends on these chemical potentials at the reference states, and the other one is going to uh, depend on RT and the natural log of the activities. So what I'm going to do is just going to write them uh, down here in a consolidated way so that we can uh, see how that turns out to be. All right, so uh, that is going to be C, chemical potential of C at the reference state plus D times the chemical potential of D at the reference state minus A, chemical potential of A at the reference state and then the other reagent, B, chemical potential of B reference state. Okay, so that is uh, one of the terms and then you just have the natural logs of the activities, right? So plus RT, you need to multiply here by uh, the second coefficient, so C times RT natural log of the activity of C plus D times RT natural log of the activity of D and then subtract your reagents. A, RT natural log of the activity of reagent A, and the last one is reagent B, RT natural log of the activity of reagent B. All right, very good. So let's examine each one of these types of terms in turn. Okay, let's begin with this one. All right, so that one is quite kind of uh, easy to see. Right, notice that this is simply the balance of the chemical potentials of products minus reagents multiply with the stoichiometric coefficients, but at the reference or standard state. Okay, so notice that this is actually not very different from the uh, general definition of the reaction gives energy. Right? This is kind of the same thing as that, with the exception that this is at the reference or standard state. Okay, so actually the way that we actually write that is simply this. That is just the reaction gives energy, but at the reference or standard state. That's this term right here. And this is something that we know how to calculate, right? Uh, we've learned how to do this in, in other units, and the way that we calculate it is two different ways, right? You can either use the enthalpy and the entropy of the reaction at a standard state, or the uh, Gibbs energy formations of products and reagents at the standard state, right? So because we have data at the standard state, regarding enthalpies, entropies, Gibbs energies, right, this we know how to calculate very nicely and that's just one of the pieces that we need in order to calculate that reaction Gibbs energy under any conditions even when we're not at the standard state. All right, so for that we actually have to include that other term right there. So let's see how we uh, work through it. All right, no notice that uh, here we could take common factor of RT Right, and uh, we can, uh, but what I'm going to do is include these factors as exponents inside the log algorithm, right? So something that is multiplying a natural log can enter the log algorithm as an exponent, okay? And that is going to allow here a simplification of the expression. And that is the current coefficient b is going to go as a power of the activity of b. Now, if I can take, uh, uh, well, the, the next thing that I can do is notice that I have here a common factor of RT of all of those natural logs, but then uh, I'm going to have here the sum of two natural logs, and that is going to be, yes, the natural log of the product of those activities, and here you have the difference of activities, of natural log of activities, and that is simply going to be the natural log of the ratio. So uh, after all of that common factor and, and rules of the uh, natural logs, we arrive at an expression that is very nice and compact, right? That is just a natural log of the activities of products in the numerator multiplied to the power of the stoichiometric coefficients, d to the d, over the activities of reagents, a to the power of a, to the power of the, sto of the stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, so notice how simple and compact this expression is. Uh, and notice that what this means. This means that they, uh, whether a reaction is spontaneous or not, under any set 
of concentrations is actually going to be uh, uh, the spontaneity, the reaction gives energy at the standard state plus a correction from the fact that your actual concentrations may differ from those of the standard state. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do in this video is simply uh, redefine this ratio that we have right here as something that is a little bit easier to handle. Okay, so uh, our final expression is going to be this plus RT natural log of Q where Q, we're going to call this the reaction quotient. Reaction quotient. And this reaction quotient is something that we'll handle in the next video. Alright, so in this video we have seen uh, the root expression to calculate whether a chemical reaction is spontaneous or not under any set of conditions uh, that we wish. That calculation only involves knowledge of the reaction gives energy at the standard state, which is something that we can do really easily, and then a correction that depends on the reaction quotient, which is something that we're going to learn about in the next video.